Hello. Hi. Welcome to Movie Humpers. I'm Bob Sham. I'm Angela. The sounds you may hear are dogs. <laughs> and uh, movies are gay. Movies are so gay. I am so tired right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so tired. That's why we have coffees. Mm. Yep. Mm. I'm a little sleepy myself. Oh, movies are gay. It's hard for me to sit still. Like We, we went to a noon screening of Robert Altman's The Long Goodbye. So good. That's not what we're talking about, though. Nope. The movie's not gay enough. Although, if you had to inject uh, gayness somehow into The Long Goodbye, how would you do it? Well, that one guy does seem to think the ladies living across from uh, him are lesbians. Lesbians, there you go. They're always with their tops off that hanging out with each other. That cop was calling Elliot Gould gay slurs, and then he Elliot did. was like, maybe you're gay slur, and he's like, maybe I am. Mm-hmm. And? He called him baby a couple times, too. And the cat was bisexual, I have it. <laughs> That's a little IMDB trivia. Movie <laughs> Humpers was trivia. was so good. <laughs> that cat, like, stole the show for me. But we're not talking about that. We're going all the way back. And in Europe. Yes. To Germany, 1931. This what? is amazing to me that this was 1931. Was anything, was, was anything crazy happening in Germany from like, <laughs> from like uh, I don't know, the 30s into the 40s? Yeah, I mean, there's this little thing called World War II. Oh, uh, WW2. The rise of the Nazis. Yeah, who'd been kicking it around since like 24. Yeah, yeah. And would grasp power firmly and in about a, a year or two after this movie was made imagine in uniform there's some firsts here i don't know if the it's well it's the first ever lesbian erotic uh movie yeah that that i know of and i, I believe that is true the first lesbian kiss yes uh probably not the first female director leontine sagan but i love that it was a woman who directed this but it should uh yeah this may be the earliest female director we will come across for a while sure and a lot of people in this movie i mean it's kind of this movie came out and it was it was uh banned in the u.s and then eleanor roosevelt saw it in new york negotiated to have it re-released in the u.s okay but it was heavily edited interesting the nazis banned it of course you would expect them to well, yeah because they hated homosexual anything well they claimed that it wasn't because of the lesbianism so much as it was because of the anti-authoritarian themes within it because mm. the prussians were uh shown as just hardliners mm -hmm. uh all for the sake of the glory of germany this is and true. the and the students and the 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 haughty teacher mm -hmm. were like no you know trying to push back against that yeah that yeah totally i mean there's no way there wasn't like gay high-ranking nazis you know what I'm oh saying? there's no way there wasn't no way there wasn't but they claimed but to hate those people but i'm sure if they want to stick you in a fuck i mean they definitely executed any reason yeah they did they had a triangle for them yeah and if there's any vagueness they probably at the very least just called you a communist and threw you Three in the camp yeah. or said your mother was jewish or something and apparently uh the acting scene in germany uh had a lot of jewish people in it so when you watch this movie i think who was it like someone who wrote the screenplay or someone have had fled to france mm. and of course germany occupied france and they were found and executed oh. so uh there's a lot of people in this movie that extras and all these people that didn't, Maybe didn't make it. Probably did not survive. Yeah. The lead is played by Hertha Thiel, the young woman. These girls are supposed to be like 14 in a in an all-girls school, but yeah. the actors are in their early 20s. Yeah. And Hertha Thiel, um, very pretty young actress. Yes, beautiful. She's in her 20s, so it could be like, okay, kind of hot, you know. Well, you got you got an issue like through modern through modern eyes, you got a uh, a an older woman, a teacher. Uh, who has at least an emotionally romantic relationship yeah. with someone who's supposed to be 14 years old. Yeah, and, you know, it's interesting because I understand why you called this, like, erotica. Mm -hmm. Because it's really all just, like, feelings. There's nothing, there's, like you said, there is one kiss, 
there's this there's this thing where all the girls seem to be in love with this teacher. Yeah, they like, tell her from the beginning, "Oh, you're gonna love her." And there's this other girl who's like the bad girl. She's very much, but yeah. she, it does seem like everyone kind of is in love with. Um, they actually say everyone has a crush on her. Fräulein von Bernberg. Bernberg. Von Bernberg. Yeah. And the main girl is Manuela. Which I I was trying to remember that name earlier. It sounds like Spanish. Or yeah, something. Manuela, and but von Bernberg, everyone loves Fräulein von Bernberg. She's the nicest. Yeah. To all of them, she's the least strict. There, there's a very there's many teachers there, but there's sort of a contrast between her and this one woman who seems to be up the headmistress's butt, mm -hmm. who like will come in and like talk about all the things you're not supposed to do and she's very like by the book and she does everything the headmistress wants and this, so there's this sort of like she's very by the book and then and then you know von Bert Bernberg Bernberg yeah um, Bernberg she says multiple times like these girls need to trust us we need to be their friends we need to like understand who they are like they're they're people basically but with that because she gives them the only affection they're getting from any adult in their life right now because this is like a they haven't seen their parents in a long time. Manuela's mother's dead and her father's off He's in the in, military yeah. somewhere. She's been staying with her aunt who obviously doesn't really care about her because she gave her like a too small torn up petticoat to bring. Like yeah. when they obviously have money, she just didn't give a shit. Yeah. So these girls and in particular Manuela don't get attention from adults. And so there is this beautiful young teacher who comes in every night turns off the lights and kisses every girl on her forehead. Yeah. And Manuela feels such a strong connection to her that when that first happens, when she's there, she like embraces the teacher Yeah. and the teacher pulls her away at first and then kisses, kisses her, her on, on the, the mouth. mouth. And it was hot. But also this is a horny ass movie. It's a horny movie because the thing is, is that's <laughs> that's as much as they ever did. Yeah, yeah. Because there's a scene later when where Manuela cries a lot. She's very emotional, and you know the teacher says, "Are you crying because of your mother? Like, are you sad? What's happening? I want you to talk to me." And she's like, "I want to talk to you, but I can't. I don't think I can say what I need to say to you." And w it's so interesting to see another scene like this. Like, this is sort of the. It's that scared of, I don't know how you're going to react when I tell you the feelings that I have for you are stronger than what you realize. Yeah, like in the campfire scene in my own private Idaho. Absolutely. You know, and she just says, you know, when you close the door to your room at night, I stare at your door in the dark and I want to come to you. And the teacher truly looks at her and says, I can't let you come to me because the other girls will be jealous. She doesn't say... I don't want you to, yeah, yeah, yeah. or you shouldn't, or don't say that. She's like, we can't. Yeah. Now, following... Which World... is even hotter, because... Following World War One, Germany had to essentially pay reparations to the entirety of Europe. And Germany's economy went, like, total shit. Like, I'm surprised they even had enough... I mean, I guess they were trying to get on the rebound, but of course this is what ro the Nazi party rose up through this race. Yeah. When you're economically defanged this country isn't going to be like oh i guess we better chill the fuck out no they're yeah. going to then blame jewish and gypsy elements within their own country and and start eating itself yeah and so and this is represented in the school mm -hmm. talking about like some kids don't have uniform like they're kids that are well to do and yet they don't have all these clothes yeah. they, they they're a little hungrier on sundays they eat very limited amounts of food and the, and it's turned into by this very authoritarian girl school regime mm -hmm. as like well we need to learn how to be hungry we need to learn how to do this yeah because there's it's that whole they're going to be mothers of soldiers yeah it's that whole um we will be rewarded for our sacrifices and our sacrifices make us righteous yeah you know and i i hate that so much there's one scene that i thought was particularly poignant to that point where one of the little girls is talking about how she's always hungry and she says this is the time of year where her parent butcher the pigs yeah it's and ham. i wish that my mother could send me a ham and one of the other little girls goes other kids don't have things like that like she truly is like not everyone's family is still well off and the girl goes i will share with everyone yeah, yeah. but she wouldn't be allowed to do that because right. that would be like her displaying that she had more and so there is sort of this thing of like we're all here so we have to suffer equally yeah for the greater good whatever that is but it's just like for the pride of prussia 
Yeah. According to the headmistress, he yeah. was a cunt. <laughs> it's very interesting because we got something that is like literally the first lesbian feature film two years before the Nazis have taken over. Mm -hmm. And they apparently were trying to destroy this movie. And but it got distributed around the world so much that they couldn't destroy every copy. It's so weird because this movie is ahead of everything. It, f it did not. In feel... terms of themes, yeah, it felt literally decades, like decades a half a ahead century, of its time. a half Absolutely. a century ahead Absolutely. of its time. And then two years later, you're in a full fascist regime mm -hmm. that is about to just wreck the fuck out of Europe again. In even a worse position, in, in even a worse form than they were before. This is a very simple story. Truly, girl comes. The best ones are, aren't it they? It really is. It really is. And I feel like we've been watching a lot of them lately where there's not a whole lot of plot, but it's more about the people and what they're dealing with and what's happening to them. And so the thing that happens that sort of brings all of this to light that. What's her name? Manuela. I keep yeah. wanting to call her Madchen because I know that's the name of an actress that I love in Twin Peaks. So I keep thinking that's the girl's name, but it's not. Um, Manuela is the star of the play that yeah. they're doing. And she plays the male part in the play. And so she gets to wear tights. And this is the other thing. There are so many little moments between the girls themselves. Like a lot of the girls do talk about, they do have a crush on the teacher, but they're also... They love these gentlemen who have sex appeal and stuff. Yeah, but then they get really handsy with each other and like they hold each other very tenderly. And when she's sitting in her costume and she has these tights on, the bad girl who was brilliant by the oh, way, yeah, she's, great. she's like rubbing her legs up and yeah, down, like totally. just like fondling her. And it's like I thought I she know. was going to kiss Manuel at one point. There were multiple, and it the seemed blonde like they girl would get so close together. Yeah, yeah, the blonde girl who seemed to be like her best friend, like was holding her She's, on the bed yeah, at yeah. one point because she was sad about her mom. Like there were a couple of other characters that just also seemed straight lesbians. And also, any situation where you put people like that, even if that's not. If you're anywhere on the, if you're anywhere in the realm of like considering it, and you go to like an all all one sex place, it's gonna happen. You're gonna have unless you're just like I am uninterested. You're completely, absolutely it's going gonna to happen. have some kind of a homoerotic. One hundred, even if it's just let's cuddle in the bed together. I had a weird homoerotic experience when I was a child with a girl at like a church sure. sleepover thing where we didn't do anything, but she did this thing where she was like rubbing different things on my back and trying to get me like guess what they were but it was very like sensual do you know what i mean it was like if i just like rubbed this around on your back little boys as kids we'd like pull our dicks out all the time mm -hmm. like we would pee and cross our streams yeah. like it was like pee fights and shit uh -huh. like we we were like naked all the fucking time like it, if, we didn't think twice about it and if and if any two of you had inclinations towards that at the same time you could have that something could have happened yeah but that's innocent but but there is like this line here like these girls all do still feel very innocent but there is i don't know they're 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 teenagers yeah their hormones are going and there's no boys so so they reward the play the good performance with some bad wine and also why why it's, are you giving these children wine? I mean, it's, it's fine. It's Germany. It's Europe. Okay, this is true. But they're, they're so not. Strict. They're not as hung up on that. I know, but, but they're it, so strict. But it's Germany. Okay, it's fine. It's booze in Germany. But so you give them strong booze, and they all got drunk. Well, and but Manuela, Manuela got, got very the most drunk. drunk, and she decided to make a speech about how much she loved well, the teacher, the Bron von Bernberg. Von Bernberg. And she talked about how she gave her a petticoat, and she said she gave me one of her petticoats so I would think of her when I wore it. I mean, she didn't say that, but it was implied. It was you know, a, it's all very, and, and then the, the headmistress walks And then it was scandalous, scandalous. And then they, she gets in trouble. She gets put in the sick room, and yeah. no one's allowed to see her. And obviously, she has a hangover. She doesn't remember what she did the next day. Everyone else is fine. Mm -hmm. But she is sick because she got incredibly drunk. And they're talking about expelling her, but this is the day that the princess is coming the to visit. The princess of Prussia shows up. And she actually particularly wants to meet Manuela. Don't know why. I because guess Because her probably... father's in the military. That's true. He's her, like a high-ranking officer. Her family is like quasi-famous. She's the niece of the headmistress. Oh, right. The headmistress's sister is who brings her. Oh, okay. So it's their brother. Right. Um, And so, yeah, it's weird, but... 
But yeah, so... It kind of saves her from being expelled. It does. It saves her from being expelled because then the princess is also like, oh, I, she's so beautiful and polite. We expect high things from her. And so they decide, okay, you can stay, but you're not allowed to talk to anyone. So basically they like ice her out or they're supposed to, but they don't. So then they're all running around getting in trouble for talking to her. And then at one point she sneaks off to the teacher's room after the teacher's been told not to speak to her yeah. either. And this is when they have like a very frank conversation about the fact that like, we cannot see each other anymore. I cannot be with you. Yeah. And also like, I'm probably going to have to go. Yeah. Like I'm probably, it's not that I can't be with you. I'm probably never going to see you again because I can't work in a place that is like this. Like the teacher truly is like, fuck this shit. I'm not following these rules. And she tells the headmistress as such, Hertha, like maybe it's time for me to leave. Hertha Thiel, the actor, the actress who played, uh, Manuela. I was kind of surprised at how kind of deep these perform some a couple of these performances were. Oh yeah, especially from her. And she apparently like she bounced around Europe after World War II a little bit, but she started TV shows in East Germany. Oh yeah, under a Soviet regime, she was on Soviet TV shows for a long time and was kind of. But yeah, sure. she was like an East German TV star wow. um, once the wall went up. Mm -hmm. So. But yeah, she was great. She was so great. So and... she leaves the the office after talking to the teacher, and the teacher goes. It's like she changed her mind, and she's gonna Manuela. And then that's when the headmistress is there, and Manuela runs. Yeah, and Manuela, she's so in love, she's gonna throw herself off the top Manuela... of the freaking stairs. She's also a fainting emotional person, mm -hmm. which I feel like is a thing that doesn't exist so much anymore as it used to back in the day girdle it was like, days <laughs> yeah girdle days but just like if you had any sort of like women would be overcome with emotion and just truly collapse and she was one of those people she did it multiple times well, how obnoxious would that be well she runs up to the top there's this there's this foreshadowing moment earlier on where a couple of the girls are trying to figure out how deep the stairwell is because it just goes up in a circle and they're like dropping firecrackers to see how long it takes for them to hit the bottom and she has climbed up to the top of those stairs and all the girls are frantically looking for her because no one knows where she is and they're all worried about her yeah. and so they eventually see that she's climbed outside of the railing at the very top and is going to throw herself over but the girls grab her and she kind of faints all at the same time and then the teacher walks out with the headmistress and the teacher looks at the headmistress and says it looks like the girls have saved um something saved us from something terrible happening that you and i would have both regretted for the rest of our yeah. lives and it really like fucking hits the headmistress yeah she's bit. slow she shame walks out the total shame walk <laughs> And so that's also why, like, that's what I was thinking of so much when you were talking about, like, the political aspects of this, is that she is trying to run, like, such a tight ship, and she has these rules, and things need to be this specific way. Her exact rules almost led to a girl taking her own life. Like, society is literally, like, winding up all around this production. Mm -hmm. And this movie's like, please chill the fuck out. And so a headmistress is like, I, yeah, I should have just let her have a relationship with our with our student. <laughs> but that's where it ends, and I yeah. kind of love that it just ended with the shame walk of the headmistress. You didn't see Manuela again. You obviously know she's okay, but you have to assume the teacher maybe left. Maybe the headmistress asked her to stay. Maybe she realized she was wrong, but probably not. She probably came in even stronger the next day. From what you know, we yeah. the way people are like that. Bad faith uh, arguers who are homophobes may like look at this and be like homoerotic grooming or whatever. But the no. controversies around this movie, around this, because the age discrepancies at the time were not like that. wasn't what was controversial. Yeah, it was the homoeroticism. And the anti-authoritarianism mm -hmm. that was controversial, not the age differences. Yeah. And, and that's not even, a, the age difference isn't even an argument within the movie. Mm -mm. And you can't put it all on some sexuality here because that's the way it was across the board. The standards of culture and the boundaries are yeah. determined by the majority, which would be like a heterosexual male society. Mm -hmm. And that's what people 
should like realize when they're talking about the boundaries and like trying to pick and choose these things to have an argument against something. I yeah. mean, how many Woody Allen's got like five movies where he's dating a teenager, right? Well, so he's the worst. So mm-hmm. and that was like in the late seventies, early eighties. So yeah, I guess if you were going to try to point to anything, if someone was going to make that argument and say it was like the grooming, it might be the kissing. But the thing is, is she's not, she's not kissing every girl on their mouth. No. She's kissing these girls on their forehead to give them some kind of affection because they don't have contact with their parents or anyone who loves them. And, and lo- it's not to it's not because she's trying to get them to all dream about her. Like that's and, not what's happening. And many of their parents probably fucking died in the previous war. Yes. And she does take particular interest in Manuela as well. Because there is something She's a babe. between them. She's a babe. Yeah, I mean, there's just legitimately something between them. Like I said, and these actors are in their 20s, yeah. so there is an erotic vibe to it. It's, it's It was a horny movie. It was a horny movie, but <laughs> but I never felt gross about this love. No, no. You know, there are some movies that we've seen where it's like very questionable and a little bit like, uh, why are we doing this? But this was not one of those. The amount the, amount the movie gives us is actually kind of uh, perfect. It's perfect, and it's also, you know, it is extremely erotic for the time, too, because this is also a time where... There were a lot of people who you might fall in love and be passionately in love, but it's all words, mm. you know, like it's all words and like actions and you just decide I'm going to marry you even though we've never done more than kiss. Yeah. You know, like this was definitely still a time that wasn't for everybody, but that was a lot of people were still like that. And so just the fact that they had any physical connection at all yeah, was a big deal. I feel like there, you know, I tried to look up some more information about this movie. It's very interesting. Hmm. Like, uh, cause you don't have a lot of information about a lot of the, there's a lot of actors in here, but only a few is there really even anything known about, you know? Yeah. So like I said, many you see in this movie did not make it. Um, many of the actors were Jewish and some fled, had to flee. That was like the story of German cinema at the time. Mm-hmm. They were ahead of the curb, and then the Nazis were like a fucking brick wall. I mean, and some of them could have honestly been singled out simply because they were in this movie. Mm. If you're going to be in a movie like that, then what are you? what is your moral code? Yeah, yeah. Which is so dumb, but you know it's true. So, yeah, this historical work, it's on YouTube. We'll put a, I'll put a link in it in the show yeah, notes. Yeah, it's definitely... It's, it's worth it's your time. It's worth your it's time. It's worth a watch. It's really beautiful. But uh, we're going to hump this this horny horny <laughs> hopper teacher movie okay okay you give it one through five i'll give it one through five combined for best out of ten let us know yeah i though there was not a ton of plot i really thought it was so interesting and you really felt the ensemble in this movie was really strong you felt like you got to know multiple girls even though they maybe weren't there that much, like their impressions were strong. And I thought that was very smart. And I don't know. It was just, it was just very well done. I'm going to say, I think it's like a solid four. Four. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to give it a 3.5. Okay. So that uh, brings it to a uh, 7.5. So that is a B, a high B. Yeah. So is this better than Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. Yeah. Okay. So this is our new number one B tier movie. And here you go. Posting it up. Madchen in uniform. The new number one B tier movie. It beats Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. It beats Collateral. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it beats National Lampoon's Loaded Weapon 1. It beats The Naked Gun. It beats everything except A and S tier movies. So <laughs> so there you go. Let's go take a nap. Uh, <laughs> you can uh, check the show notes for more places and links to find us. Movies will stay gay. Yep. Death to all traitors. Death to all traitors. Death to all traitors.